Guys, it's been a crazy two weeks with the new Ryzen processors launching exactly seven days ago. And now this. Say hello to my newest friend for the past few days, the NVIDIA GTX 1080 Ti. And it just so happens to claim to be the most powerful graphics card on the planet. Now here in my hands, it may look like a regular Founders Edition, but man, it can power through games. Let's dive into this right after a message from our sponsor. You can only rely on the pro to do the job with every keystroke satisfying like the millions before it. Quality feel with every key, regardless of your space. Cooler Master Master Keys Pro, take it with you, make it yours. Now, even though Nvidia announced it about a week ago, the GTX 1080 Ti has been a long time in the making. It may not feel like a long time, but the GTX 1080 was released 10 months ago, the Titan X 7 months ago, and the GTX 980 Ti has been around for nearly 2 years. It was time to launch a follow-up to the successful GTX 980 Ti, and that's where this new card comes in. In terms of performance claims, Nvidia says this new GTX 1080 Ti should have enough horsepower to beat the super expensive 1200 US dollar Titan X, but for a fraction of the price. As a matter of fact, we wouldn't be surprised to see the Titan X discontinued altogether while its cores are repurposed for Quadro and Tesla cards. And about the price, it's $700, which is still a lot to spend on a graphics card, but for that money you get some extremely high performance. Why? Well, as you can see by the specifications, the GTX 1080 Ti is basically a Titan X which has been massaged in an effort to heighten yields and slightly costs. Nvidia is also doing away with their practice of selling the Founders Edition for a premium, but coming launch this will be the only version of the card available. Board partners will have their products launched in a few weeks, so you may want to wait for that. The GTX 1080 Ti uses the same 60nm Pascal GP102, 3584 CUDA cores and 224 texture units as the Titan X, but it has one less 32-bit memory controller, one less ROP partition and a bit less L2 cache. To ensure optimal memory performance, each of the GTX 1080 Ti's 11 memory controllers is paired up with a single GDDR5X IC, granting it a total of 11 gigabytes of video memory that's accessed through a 352-bit bus. According to Nvidia, this massive memory allocation will become a key factor as more buyers look towards a VR, 4K or even 5K screens. Achieving Titan X beating performance while still maintaining a TDP of 250 watts meant increasing bass and boost clocks while also upping the GDDR5X frequency to 11 GHz to compensate for the narrower 352-bit bus. The reference or Founders Edition of the GTX 1080 Ti looks great, but other than the logo on its shroud, it's pretty much indistinguishable from other Nvidia cards. It is 10.5 inches long, it uses milled aluminum shroud with an integrated illuminated GeForce logo, and there's a full covered backplate to dissipate additional heat. The only major difference between this and the other NVIDIA GPUs is the lack of a dedicated DVI connector on the rear I.O. area. Instead, NVIDIA is using this space for additional ventilation, and this version of the GTX 1080 Ti will ship with a display port to dual-link DVI adapter. Board partners are free to design their cards with that missing connector. I can understand where this is coming from. If you're spending $700 on a GPU, you likely have a DisplayPort equipped monitor. What you can see with your bare eyes is that Nvidia has thoroughly revised their internal heatsink design, so it has doubled the amount of surface area while also updating the PWM to a more advanced 7-phase all-digital layout. But will this lead to lower temperatures or lower fan speeds when compared against the Titan X? Well, blower style coolers are known for their silence, but hopefully these revisions will help. I'll check up on that later. Alright, now with all that out of the way, let's start off with the benchmarks at 1440p and then move on to the full 4K resolution. Make sure to hit pause if you want to study all these charts a bit more. If you want more information about frame rates over time and test system specs, head over to the Hardware Connects website review. A link will be in the description. Starting things off with the 2560x1440 resolution and DX11, there is a hiccup right away. There just isn't much difference between the standard GTX 1080 and much more powerful GTX 1080 Ti and Titan in Call of Duty. Why? Because this game's engine is limited to 125 frames per second and the two expensive cards 
couldn't push beyond that, so things look much closer than they really are. The rest of the tests show just how powerful the GTX 1080 Ti really is. It trades below with the Titan X and remains a good 25% to 40% ahead of the GTX 1080. Meanwhile, the last generation Ti card isn't even on the radar. I wish I could say that I was surprised by these results, but Nvidia already pulled the covers of the fact that the GTX 1080 Ti would be at least as fast as their Titan X. That's exactly what's been shown here with the newer, less expensive GPU actually pulling a full percentage point ahead. I should also mention that Doom Vulcan results are also game limited to 200 frames per second, so imagine what this card could do without that block in place. Rounding things off with Gears, Hitman, Quantum Break, and Rise of the Tomb Raider reflects the same thing as before. Without any competition, these charts are becoming a bit boring. However, there's one odd misstep with Quantum Break which seems to benefit from the Titan X's wider memory bus and additional ROP units. Now we get into a big boy resolution of 4K. The DX11 results show a repeat of what we've already seen with one exception. Since Call of Duty is no longer artificially limited, we can really see what the GTX 1080 Ti can bring to the table in that and other games. It didn't even have problems chewing through Fallout 4's new high resolution texture pack and Titanfall 2's crazy 8x MSAA setting. Amazing stuff. Rounding out the game benchmarks, there's a bunch of DirectX 12 which only cement the fact that the GTX 1080 Ti is an ultra powerful graphics card. It trades blows with the Titan X, sometimes winning by a narrow margin and sometimes losing by a bit. One thing I do want to mention is that in some games it didn't exactly display playable frame rates. But remember, almost every title here was pushed at its highest settings. Getting playable frame rates would be as easy as disabling anti-aliasing, which is something that's not really needed for such a high 4K resolution. Moving on to temperatures, and there's not really any surprise here. Nvidia's cooler and fan speeds algorithm are designed to keep the graphics core around 84 degrees C, and that's exactly where it remained for my testing. This ensures that there's enough thermal room for this card to hit maximum boost clocks without sacrificing noise. Speaking of noise, even though I didn't open up this GTX 1080 Ti, there are obviously some improvements going on behind the scenes. Even though the core and the memory are operating at higher temperatures, this card isn't any louder than a Titan X. Don't mistake this for silence though, since it's actually a bit loud and if you want a quieter experience, you'll need to wait for custom cards. With the same performance as the Titan X comes very similar power consumption. Make sure you have at least a good 650 watt power supply before buying the GTX 1080 Ti since it still does require a lot of electricity. And now finally for overclocking. Pumping a bit more voltage, boosting fan speeds to 75% and upping the power limit allowed me to hit a constant speed of 2050 megahertz while the memory didn't have any problems going a bit over 12 gigahertz. However, I wouldn't recommend too much overclocking on the stock cooler since that increase in fan speeds resulted in a very noisy gaming environment. Once again, I'd recommend you wait for the custom cards for better overclocking experiences. Of course, with those higher frequencies comes even more impressive performance. So what do I think about this card? Well, that's a tough one. There's no doubt it's great to have less expensive alternatives to the Titan X, and I have to credit Nvidia for keeping the price somewhat decent, even though they don't have any competition right now. And we still can't forget the fact that the GTX 1080 Ti costs almost $700 and will likely hit $1,000 here in Canada. But do we get good value for the money? Again, it depends on what you're looking for. At 1440p, there isn't a game in existence that can bring the GTX 1080 Ti to its knees, and that even goes for Fallout 4 with its new memory-gobbling high-resolution texture pack. Not only does the GTX 1080 Ti do well in current games, but there's more than enough juice left in its tank for ultra-smooth performance well into the future. However, you shouldn't forget that the regular GTX 1080, which is now $100 less expensive, also provides excellent frame rates at lower resolutions, especially at 1080p. Moving on to 4K and frame rates do of course suffer, but this card is infinitely better positioned to tackle such a high resolution than something like a GTX 1080. Ultra high resolutions are where the GTX 1080 Ti makes the most sense, and anything less, it's pure overkill. But you know what? Sometimes overkill is a good thing too, right? So what do you guys think about the GTX 1080 Ti? Uh, will you jump into it right now, or are you waiting to see what AMD has coming if they ever get around to launching Vega? Uh, or is this simply too expensive for your tastes? Let us know in the comments down below. I'm Ebro with Harukin X. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.